Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to talk about how I made it. So first of all, we're starting with Blender. I will put the link to the same video in the description down below. I recorded it with my phone. Okay, so let's uh, just set up some rendering setting. I'm going to go to render tab and make it a standard. Now it's time to set the resolution. Uh, I'll make the frame rate to 30 frames per second and resolution is fine. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to make the starting frame to 100, something like this. And uh, I'm going to click prefetch to load the footage into the RAM. And I'm going to go to the first frame, which is 100. And I'm going to make a location into a perspective. I'm going to turn on normalize and click detect features. So I want to delete those tracker at the top on the cars because it will mess up our track because we want to track the camera, not other moving object in the scene. So I'm going to select them and I'm going to click. Uh, I'm going to box select them and I'm going to click X and delete them. Okay, so click uh, A and select all and track forward. Now it's time to add another one. So again, click detect features and now track backward. Something like this. Okay. So now it's time uh, to delete some of the trackers on the car. Uh, as you can see, they are red. I'm going to box select them like that. And uh, let me just reselect them. Okay, I'm going to uh, select them and click X and delete. Okay, so let's move forward. If you do have other trackers, yeah, we have some right here. I'm going to delete them. Okay, so now we're going to go to solve. Uh, now let's look for a perspective change. Uh, so I think I'm going to make the keyframe A to 130 and the keyframe B to something like 200 or maybe something. Uh, I'm going to turn on three of the options and I'm going to click solve camera motion. Okay, so as you can see, we got an error here and uh, now it's time to clean up. Okay, so click filter uh, tracks and make the track threshold to 10 or maybe you can set it to 7. And as you can see, it selected 27 problematic key, uh, key, uh, trackers and again, solve camera motion. And as you can see, we got an error of 0.18 and this is what we want. So now it's time to set the final uh, tracking setting. I'm going to select one of the tracker, uh, this one, and I'm going to click set origin. Okay. So I'm going to select three trackers like that and I'm going to click floor and it will set to floor. Okay. So now it's time to set uh, uh, it as a background uh, of the camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click set as uh, maybe I can uh, just go for this one. Set as background and uh, now it's time to set the axis. So I'm going to select one of the uh, marker and I'm going to set X axis or maybe this one. Or maybe we can try that one. Um, no, no, I think that one is fine. Set axis. As you can see, it's actually aligned perfectly with the road. And this is what we wanted. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to select two of the markers to set the scale. So I'm going to make uh, the distance to something like uh, three. Or maybe we can uh, uh, increase the number to six. Uh, okay, so I'm going to click uh, set tracking scene. So we will be able to see the cube in the scene. And I think I'm going to make the distance to 2.9 as I think it's uh, okay. I'm going to increase it slightly. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to go to my layout from general to layout. And as you can see, it's added a cube and a plan. So if I go to camera view and I'm going to expand this. If I play it, as you can see, it's perfectly sticking into the ground. And now we can add any kind of object into the ground. It might be your product, your, you know, VFX stuff, uh, simulations. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm using a taxi model or a car model from Sketchweb. I'll put the link to the same model in the description down below. If you want to check it, just try give it a try. It's very good. And okay, so as you can see, I'm just trying to find out if it's okay. Then we're going to use the model. So I'm going to save it and here we go. First, we're going to save our, more, uh, our blend file, save blender file. And now what we're going to do, as you can see, we have a model. I will put the link to the same model in the description down below. You can use it. I have made some changes. So I will also put the link to the same model from my drive. And I have added a driver into it and uh, which feels OK. I added a little animation into it. So I'm just going to scale this up. And I'm going to move these into x-axis. 
like that and it's as you can see it's pretty small i think i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger to measure the scale of the actual car in the side of it so i'm gonna scale it up like that to actually match the scale of the sided cars i'm gonna move it on x axis maybe okay so i'm gonna select the camera under the background image increasing the opacity so we will be able to see what's going on so i'm just gonna move it onto y axis like that and i'm gonna click uh something called uh space to actually play it if it's okay then we're going to animate the car so uh, i'm gonna select it and i'm gonna move these on x axis like that so i'm just going to click i to add a location uh keyframe and i will move to the ending frame i'm gonna click uh i'm gonna move it into x axis and again we're going to add uh, a keyframe and i'm gonna make it a linear by clicking t and as you can see we have some good looking animation okay so maybe we can animate the tires if possible uh, because if the tire is not animated it's not gonna look perfect and we're going uh, for this one so i'm gonna select all of the tires i'm gonna you know make it to local and if i rotate it uh, if you're rotating it i'm gonna make xyz euler for every tire because it will not be animated perfectly if you want so i'm going to select them one by one uh to actually change its uh rotation settings i'm going to select this one and change it to xyz euler and i'm going to select the other tire and i'm going to change it to xyz euler and i don't know how to pronounce it but i'm just doing my best okay okay so now it's time to select them again like that and i'm gonna go to camera view i'm gonna hit i and add a rotation keyframe i'm gonna grow 20 frame away uh, forward i'm gonna rotate these on negative y axis like that and if we play it as you can see it's rotating the right way but we want it to be uh inf infinite as you can see it's stop i'm gonna click shift e and linear extrapolation so it will continue till your blender dies you know by clicking shift e and linear extrapolation is you know making everything infinity okay i'm gonna move this uh, a little bit closer to make it faster if you want and you can make it slower if you want but i think i will make it a little slower than it is right now because it's very fast and the car is not moving like that i'm gonna move it to 115th frame and as you can see it's working you know it's fine and uh, this is what we wanted you know okay so i have this burger model downloaded from sketchfape i'll put the link to the same shit in the description down below if you wanted to uh okay so i'm gonna scale it according to the taxi and i'm gonna move this up a little bit like that and we'll place it on the right spot on the top of the taxi and i will try to you know scale it accordingly i'm gonna move it into y axis like that and uh okay so i'm gonna select the bugger and i'm gonna select the car control p and we'll add an object uh, parent so i'm i think i'm gonna move this a little into y axis and i think i'm gonna scale it down slightly like that and uh, okay so i'm gonna move it forward i'm just gonna slightly move it that way and i'm going to move it that way also so it's fit in the frame of this metal object on the top and as you can see we have a taxi moving perfectly and this is what we wanted so i hope you got me and uh now it's time for some final stuff that we can add to which is a shadows and combining the footage with the cgi object so for the shadow i'm gonna add a plan and i will scale it up like that and i'm gonna move it into y axis and move it into x axis like that and uh, scale it up according to the car model you know i'm going to scale it in on x axis like that and uh i'm going to move it on y axis i'm going to scale it on x axis okay that's fine okay so i'm gonna expand these to that way and i'm gonna select the plan and i will change the rendering to cycles and i'm gonna make it a gpu compute device and i'm gonna turn on denoise i'm gonna go to object data of the plan click visibility and we'll click shadow catcher so it will just cast shadows and not uh 
will not be shown in the render but just shadows on it so i'm using an hdri i'll put the link to the same hdri in the description down below if you're interested it's perfectly made for this scene and i'm gonna go to render view okay so uh, what i'm going to do i'm gonna go to uh, rendering and I'm gonna under film and i'm gonna make it transparent and as you can see it's perfectly blended into it and this is what we wanted and as you can see it's perfectly uh you know shining to the way of uh sun like the real footage okay so as you can see it's aligned with the cars and other objects in the scene and uh, i will give it a try okay so i'm just going for this one okay so as you can see it's clipping through the tires of the car i'm gonna select the plane and i will try to move it on uh, z axis so okay i'm gonna go to solid view and i'm gonna move it slightly down like that maybe i can zoom in and we'll try to move it on z axis like that and we'll try to match it with the tires so i'm gonna go to render view and as you can see it's perfectly matching with the tires of the car and this is what we wanted and maybe we can move it slightly up so it will slightly clip through it so it feels like it's moving on the ground okay so i'm gonna go to uh I'm gonna just set up some compositing for the final stuff in Blender and right now if we just uh, play through the timeline as you can see we have some perfect animation in rendering it's not playing in real time but I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna expand this one and maybe I'm gonna go to compositing but first I'm gonna set the max sample to 60 in the rendering and uh, in the final output I'm gonna set an output to an FFmpeg I'm gonna make the encoding to MPEG-4 and I'm gonna go to compositing and right now uh, we have so many nodes I don't want them to be like that if I render an image uh, I will try to render it and our image is rendered but first of all go to this uh, background layer delete it and now we just have a foreground layer here we, because we don't need the background created by blender by default so I just need the movie clip and uh, the render layer I'm gonna delete other nodes in between we just have two of them i'm gonna also delete this one right now we have two nodes one is a movie clip and one is a render layer and i'm gonna move it to that way i'm gonna click shift a and i'm gonna add an alpha over node in between these two nodes to combine them together i'm gonna connect the image with the first one and the second image with the second one and i'm gonna connect this image with the composite node and this one with the viewer node okay so as you can see it's perfectly combined together as you can see it's also casting the shadows and other smaller details and uh, uh, and i set the number of sample to 60 which is also matching with the background noise level so this is just an easy uh, thing to do with blender it's just super easy to make this kind of vfx in blender so i hope you enjoyed the video and i'm gonna increase the shutter motion also which is uh, a key thing in blender VFX, I'm gonna zoom it in and as you can see we have some perfect kind of results. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribe and thanks for watching.